video is being recorded on Sunday evening, June 25th, 2023. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you guys had a great weekend. Uh, in this video, I'm going to take a look at what I call the recession decline. And this is around recessions. There's always a stock market decline. You know, it can begin a couple months before the recession, then it wreaks havoc. And typically the stock market bottoms before the recession ends. And that's actually one of the best times to buy stocks. So I don't want to be all bearish in this video, but it's important to understand that. But at the same time, and uh, you know, getting into it, at the same time, you know, if there's a recession, you're probably going to have a serious decline in the stock market. So th this is a table going back to all the recessions, 12 of them uh, since 1948. What is that? Uh, so about 75 years. And so the first column, that's just the length of the recession. The second column shows the S&P's peak before the recession. So when did the market make a peak, not necessarily the peak, but when did the market make a peak before the recession? And so average, I think it comes out to like one or two months, you know, and then you get, uh, you know, how long is that decline from that point? How long is that decline? And I think, you know, I've seen some work depending on what data people are using. I mean, the average can be five or six months, something like that. Although, you know, it might be a little bit more looking at all these and then how much did the market decline? So, um, you know, pause the video. You can take a look at the uh, look at this. And uh, th I have a lot of slides in this video. I'm actually going to go through um, every recession decline. And so every recession since 1948. So... If I spend too much time on each of these slides, this will be a really long video. So I'm going to have to be quick here. So the arrows just show the decline I'm talking about. So this is 1948 to 1949. The high, the yellow portion, that's the recession. So in all these charts, the yellow is the recession. This is the, the minus 21%. That's the recession decline. Notice how, you know, a couple months before the recession ends, that's actually a really good time to buy stocks. You'll see this in all these slides. So... This is the first one, 1948 to 1949. Here's the next one, 53 to 54. This was, I think, one or one or two of the most mild declines. So I counted, if I counted the peak here, it would have been minus 15%. But counting this peak, again, you can see the peak here. Here's the recession. So it peaked, you know, three months or so before. This is the recession decline. Boom. Then you had the big move after the recession. But, I mean, it's following a similar pattern. Here's 57 to 58 uh, peak here. So that wasn't the ultimate peak. It was a little bit below, but market peak here, boom, that's the recession decline minus 21% for a couple months. And you know, if I would have, this is what July, if I would, if you mark it here, July to December, um, you know, that's what five months or so. And again, you see the big recovery after the recession. Okay. Here's 1960. So this is the most mild decline. So again, you have the peak here several months before the recession. That's the recession decline. Then you see the recovery. So there's a clear pattern here. Now let's get into 1969 to 1970. There's actually two of these where the market peaked well before the recession hit. And so this is one. The other one, you know, I'm going to say it now because I might forget. The other one is the 2000 to 2002 period. So the market actually peaked here. And it was down quite a bit, um, you know, before the recession hit. So this is the recession here. This is the recession decline. So you have a peak here about a month before, minus 31%. Again, take note of this. This is really bad, but the market recovers big time before the recession ends. So, yes, this is similar to the stock market, you know, right here, what we've seen since, you know, this since October. Although the current market technically is much, you know, is much stronger than this. But nevertheless, I mean, it, there, there are some similarities. Okay, 73 to 74. Uh, I lied. So there's actually three where the market peaked before the recession. This is another one. And again, this is, I marked the peak here about a month before, minus 46%. So th these declines are, you know, when it's a bad recession, that's, you know, a year or so or more. I mean, you get pretty bad declines. So that's 73 to 74. 
Here's the double dip in the early 80s. So look, I mean, you could have been in 1980, you could have looked at this was actually, I think, a new all time high for the S&P right here. Then you had the first recession and I mean, no lag whatsoever, 19% declined very quickly. Then you had the recovery, but uh, the second part of the double dip. So the, the market peak here, a couple months before the recession itself, market peaks here, minus 25%. And again, look, you have the big rebound after the recession, big rebound after the recession. Here's 1990, because um, you know one of, one of my buddies made the point. Well, the mar- the market went up during the 1990 recession, which I guess technically you could say, yeah, through the you know through the whole recession, it, it was flatter, went up a little bit. However, the market went down 20 percent during it, so that's pretty significant. So again, the yellow is the recession, the arrows are when I'm measuring the recession decline. So the recession decline was 20 percent. Okay, here's 2001. So this is the third example of when the market peaked before the recession hit. So here's the recession right here. So the recession decline, I mark it here. Uh, the S&P goes down 31%. So this is like a month or two, um, you know, a month or two before the recession starts. However, you know, I probably should have measured it here instead of here. So if I measured it here, uh, what is that? November, 2000, then, um, you know, what is that? Four months or so, you know, before the actual recession. And this is actually, this was a little, this is different because I think this is the only one where the market actually made a lower low after the recession. I mean, you did have this big recovery here, you know, market bottoms here, you have their recovery. But as I said, I think the only one of the market actually made a lower low. 2007 to 2009, you know, great financial crisis, global financial crisis. Basically, it's almost like the entire bear market because this this is the recession. It was so long. And so, you know, I'm measuring the peak, which is the act, where the actual market peak was, so down 57, 58%. So again, this is what happens when you have a long recession. It's really bad for the market. And uh, th- this is what happens if you have a shock recession that's really short. So, I mean, this obfuscates the data a little bit. I mean, the decline was like, I don't even know if it was one month. So this is, you know, the market, I guess, technically looking at the recession, you know, maybe I'm measuring it wrong here. But I mean, you know, based on this, you could say the market actually peaked into the recession. But, you know, this is such an outlier that, you know, it's it's not that important. But again, the look at the point where, you know, the, the market really runs before the recession ends and when it ends. Okay, so back to this. Um, yeah, I just want to highlight this. So the length of the recession. So, you know, t- aside from 2020, you have a minimum of six months. I mean, there's obviously, you know, 73, 81, you know, 2000s. I mean, those stick out. But, you know, what's the median here? We're probably looking at six to 10 months, you could say, somewhere in there. Um, and so interestingly here, I mean, 1990. So so this is how, this is when the when the decline that I'm measuring, when it started, like how how many months before the start of the recession. And so recently, you know, aside from these first two, you know, you have one month before, one month, one month, zero, zero, minus three, you know, one month before, two months before. So, you know, other than this, you, you, if you're going back to, uh, let's say, the last 10 recessions, so you only have one or two that, you know, the peak was three months before. So that's the that's the important thing to remember. It's most likely that, I mean, the stock market, like let's say the recession starts in October, you know, the market could run in, you know, it could run and not peak until September, possibly, you know, what if the, re- what if the recession doesn't start until December, you know, the market could run and at that point it could peak in October or November. Um, so that's just something to consider. And, you know, the, the, that, that decline is all over the place. It really depends on the length of the recession. I mean, if it's, if it's going to be a long recession, you're going to get a, the recession decline is going to be longer. 
as far as a percentage decline, you know, other than 13 and 14 percent here, I mean, those were, you know, 1960 and before uh, everything. You have a minimum of 19 percent, 19 and 20 percent. Those are the minimums. So, you know, what does this mean for precious metals? Well, it all comes back to, you know, when is the recession going to hit? Before that, you should see the yield curve steepen. You know, bonds will probably roll over. And, uh, you know, that's going to precede the Fed having to ease. But, you know, the way things are looking right now, it doesn't look like it's imminent. You know, maybe at the soonest, it's three or four months away. I mean, I'm just thinking out loud. But it, it's important to note that the recession decline, I mean, th this is really going to be the next catalyst for precious metals. And the longer the recession is, the longer and bigger the decline will be, the better that's going to be for precious metals. So I think the biggest takeaway is there's always, if there's a recession, there's going to be a decline. It's probably going to be at least 20%. All right. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment and uh, look forward to talking to you guys again in the next video.